Now we will build up a simple primitive plane into a slightly more sophisticated version with lofted surfaces and so on in order to cover some of the new concepts that you need to know. So here's the simple version of the Primi plane. And notice we have some hard-coded values for the, the wing root, the wing tip, the wingspan. And let's go ahead and compile this and we'll bring it up in Tasty. Now the first thing to note is that we added a settable slot here for the dihedral. And we'll go ahead and change that to see how it changes the model. And then we'll trace through in a few minutes and see how it is that the dihedral actually affects the dihedral angle on the wings. If we show settables here, we can change this value, for example, to 20, 30, to get really radical, or back to 5, and we have the corresponding result here. So to start off with, we have the wing assembly, which is of type box wings. It takes some inputs, and again, these values are hard-coded for now. And the root center, translate the center, that's the center of the entire thing, down by the fuselage radius, that brings us to the bottom of the fuselage, but then back up half of the thickness, and then we move to the front by one-sixth of the fuselage length. So if we look at this from the front, We see that the center is moved up by half the thickness, so the root center is right here. So the bottom of this wing box is exactly touching the bottom of the fuselage, as you would expect. The fuselage is simply a cylinder right now with a radius and a length. Now the box wings themselves contain a sequence of two wings and we pass in a root point and the box wing itself uses this root point to establish its own center. So this is a self-centering part. So it takes that root point, which is right here, at the root, translates it along the face normal vector right by half of its own width. So in one case, the face normal vector right is pointing out this way. In the other case, we've established a mirror image. So the face normal vector right points out this way. Now let's see how we establish the orientation for that mirror image. First of all, we do some local variables. And this let star is the way to establish local variable bindings. The star means that the second one can depend on the first one. For a let, we have a list of bindings where it's very similar to a computed slot. So the first is the name of the local variable and then the an expression to provide the value for that local variable. So here we're binding the hinge to be the face normal and here we have a conditional, another new concept, an E case. That means that the child's side should evaluate either to right or left. If it does not evaluate to either of these, then we'll get an error right here. And we purposely want to get an error because of this because we expect this to evaluate either to right or left. Now the child side we're establishing right here, another E case, and it's simply based from the child index. If the child index is zero, we consider that to be the right side. For one, we consider it to be the left side. So based on the child side, we establish a hinge, and now with your right hand, point your thumb in the direction of this hinge. So for the right wing, the hinge is the front vector. Let's trace it through for the right first. So we have our hinge, which is the front vector. So that's pointing right out at the screen at you, or if we get a top view on this, the front vector is pointing toward the bottom of the screen, down this way. So point your thumb in that direction. Now, which way do your four fingers rotate? That's the way that this vector will rotate when we're using the rotate vector D. So in order to establish what is considered the local right hand vector. We rotate vector in degrees, the face normal vector of the child side. So the face normal vector right or the face normal vector left. Because remember the child side will evaluate either to right or left. And then the angle is the dihedral that we established up above, rotating about that hinge. So for the right side we're rotating about the front vector. So that will bring the wing up for a positive dihedral angle. And finally the orientation is a established as the right face goes along this right vector and the top face is a result of crossing that hinge with the right vector. So that ends up pointing to the top in both cases. The front is the normal face normal vector front. As you can see right here in the case of the left side. We are actually aligning the local right face of the local reference box with something close to the left global vector. The top is still aligned close to the top global vector and the front is aligned to the front. So this does result in a left-handed coordinate system. Now the box wing itself contains a single child object which is simply a box and it would get its width, length, and height and center passed down automatically from the parent.